Now we're going to just get a sense of the data using our software. I'm going to assume that you're kind of got it up and running, kind of comfortable with it, and have loaded data. If you have any questions, I put a kind of a prereq um, video in the, uh, the description of this video. Um, but we're going to have a look at the data, kind of get a sense of what's inside of it. We're going to talk about the difference between a matrix and a vector and how to select. So if you have a big matrix, how to select an individual column or vector. Uh, we're going to run some really simple summary statistics. Uh, and then I'll give you a, a way to kind of visualize the data with histogram as well. Pretty short, pretty simple. Great, so let's switch over to R. Uh, I got the R console up here, and then I had uh, opened up a new script uh, and did a little code for loading the data. So open it up. I obviously had set up a working directory and the data. I'll put the data in the description. Once again, need help loading, go to a previous video. So we now have the NHIS data inside are so let's get a sense of what data is so first off you could just do um, structure So you can see that our NHIS data um, is a data frame. It's got 4,785 observations, nine variables, all listed down here. So inside R, um, what we did with this command here is we created what's called an object, or I guess a data frame. Um, and inside R, it considers it this little matrix that's nine by 400, 4,785 objects long. So if you were to kind of type the whole thing out, you would see this giant matrix here. Um, and if you want a sense of like what these observations look like, you could do the summary and it gives you the min, the max, the mean, uh, the median, and so on for each of those nine variables um, inside of it. So let's say we wanted to do uh, look at a single vector. Like let's say we just wanted to think about BMI, right? So how do we select the BMI and how do we do, say, calculate the variance for the body mass index for this survey? Uh, it's very simple. What we're going to use is this little dollar sign indicator. So uh, in R, we have we created the object NHIS, um, and we had uh, the read.csv had said header equals true, so it designated that this thing had a little header. Um, so what did the header look like? These are the headers. So these are the variable names. So you saw BMI, sleep, education, see height, weight, education, just like down here. So NHIS is the kind of broad R object, and then by putting a dollar sign on it for BMI, we're saying and so now you saw these are all the observations of body mass index for the entire thing. Uh, and there's, you know, 4,000 of them. So it goes down a lot. You can see how much space it takes up here. Uh, I'm going to do control L to clear the console. So once again, what I did was control plus L, I mean, on the keyboard, and it cleared everything. Great. So that's how you select a vector. So now we could do our little simple statistics just on that single vector. So what's the mean of BMI? It says here that the mean is 31.73. What's the standard deviation? NHIS. The standard deviation is 17, which seems like a lot. Uh, the variance is... So on, with a variance of this amount. So you could have just as easily done it for sex. The variance is that. Uh, so the mean for sex is 1.5, standard deviation, so on and so forth. Great, all very simple, right? Uh, lastly, let's do summary. And I'll show you kind of a common error that will probably be painfully too often for you. So summary is kind of a broad, you know, it gives you once again the min, the max, the mean, 
uh, the first quartile, the median, third quartile, that sort of thing. So when we run this, we should get you know a list of all of those things. Oh, but we got an error message. So what happened? Well, R is pretty peculiar, so there was this issue. I left BMI lowercase, but if you recall, when we looked at the header titles, BMI was capitalized. So you have to stay consistent with the headers. So I changed it, we run it again, and now it works just fine. So this is the min for BMI, this is the max for BMI, that person's large. Uh, what happens if you just kind of slightly misspell summary? Once again, you get another error message. So error and function, uh, unable to find the inherited method, so they're just not familiar with this function. So be sure you get everything correct um, case-wise. Uh, you could also give names to these little operators you're doing. So uh, let's do something like uh, let's take the standard deviation of BMI and call it SDBMI. Um, run this. We now have created this little variable called SDBMI. It's sitting in R. So when we recall it, it pumps, pushes out. The, um, just that code. So now I notice I'm just selecting the command. It gives the same value. Uh, we could also do something like uh, number of observations. We just little command length. It's going to count the length, like how many observations are inside this. Run that line. You now have this thing called obs. It's a single value that has counted how many observations like of BMI there were. If you remember, I think there were. 4,700, yeah, 4,785, and you could then combine those variables that we created and do little operations with them. So what's the standard deviation divided by the number of observations? Think, oh, think that uh, this is the equation for the standard error, and you know we could do any number of combination here. Great. Uh, you might learn standard error later. The point of that was uh, you could uh, create these little variables and then you could use those variable names just below it to run little operations on it. Uh, but lastly, uh, so we got a sense of how to do these commands, mean, standard deviation, variance, summary, all that sort of thing. But now let's kind of visualize the data. So for that, what we're going to do is do a histogram. So the command for histogram is just hist. Uh, and so notice what happens. Let's just do try to do a histogram for the entire data set in HIS. You can see we got an error. X needs to be numeric. Right now it's this you know giant um, matrix. So we'll just do hist for the single column of BMI. What happens? Boom, there it is. So histogram. Here are all the observations, and there's a whole bunch around zero. I think overweight is 25 and up, and obese is 30 and up. So uh, I'm going to do a video later on on how to clean up this data. Uh, but you could also do stuff like show multiple histograms. So we're doing par, mf, row, and then this vector here. So what it's saying is we're going to have a little plot. It's going to have two histograms. Uh, there's going to be one row and two columns. So this thing right here, do the command. It opens up the plot, and the plot's ready to fill up, and it's waiting for one row, two columns. So it's waiting for a histogram to go here, and then a histogram to go here. So let's do the BMI as the first histogram, uh, and then let's do something like uh, maybe, I don't know, weight, I think was it. Um, keep in mind, it's case sensitive, so BMI was all caps, weight was lowercase. So we run this, it should fill it in over here. Bam. Um, with the plot window, as you readjust this window, it's going to rescale this, and then you can right click and copy it as a bitmap. When you copy this as a bitmap, it's going to save this thing the way it looks. Um, but if you make it all small like this, it'll copy the squished version of it when you do so copy bitmap. Um, but you also, let's clear the plot, you could just as easily done something if you wanted to, let's say, so now we're going to have two rows and one column. And you have two rows and one column if for some reason you wanted to do that. But just for now, for the sake of saving this, let's because it kind of looks nicer, let's do single row, 
two columns. You have the two ones here. This is the histogram for BMI. This is the histogram for weight. Once again, for weight, you see all of these 1,000 pound people, uh, which I'll, I'll do another video on how we clean up data um, and why we had these odd observations and why you might have such odd, odd observations in your own data. But just from this, you could get a sense of the data. So for BMI, you have a nice little histogram. You can see most of them are centered right around what looks around 30, 25. For weights, most people are centered right around below between maybe 200 and 175. Uh, I'll do another video too for histogram where you could look up how to uh, adjust your histogram. Um, but here you have a nice little sense of your data and you could do it for all of the variables. So sleep pops up you can see most people are down here but these outliers are screwing things up so that's it hopefully it was helpful thanks and have a good day bye